Good morning and a warm welcome to Design Connect 21. Today is our last day of inspirational talks. All our talks have been recorded and will be sent to you via email with all the links um, sometime next week. Um, but to kick off today, we'll be speaking with Vanna Smith. He is the Gauteng Head of Commercial at Homewood, and he'll be sharing Homewood's amazing range of furniture and their big focus towards sustainability. So we can't wait to hear your talk. Over to you, Vanna. Morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, if I can, obviously, I just want to play a, a small video for you guys, just to give it a little bit of a, the back line of what I'm going to talk about. Um, it's our main aim is is obviously to to work towards more sustainability and uh, doing something positive for our environment and uh, obviously the people in our country and obviously the, the community and our country itself. So um, if I can just ask them uh, uh, just to play the little video for us, please. Okay, we'll get back to that one. Um, so just to let you know, I mean, how this whole story started. Um, Ian Perry, the founder and director of Homewood, uh, received a, a phone call from Michael Spinks. He's the development director at Nando's. Um, and obviously, because Ian's got a BS, uh, BHC in forestry, he's the go-to guy if you want to know anything about hardwoods or any woods uh, for that matter. Um, so he gave him a call on the 1st of November 2018 uh, and just needed some specification on, on wood as a raw material for furniture. Now, normally with these things, I mean, it's, it's, you, you're normally in two minds. Um, would you proceed with it? Um, and or should you just, is it going to waste your time? Because you, you often get these things um, that puts a stumble stone in your rock, in your, in your way. And um, for some reason, Ian just decided to, well, Let's attempt it. Um, so I think the little clip is ready. So if I can ask uh, if we can just play that clip um, just as an intro to, to my presentation as well. Uh, Ian brought us all together, um, the whole design team, the guys at the factory, sat them down, and he came up with some absolutely amazing designs. We all thought, oh, well, you know, it's, Ian's got a bee in his bonnet, and uh, it's one of those those fly-by-night, so it's going to be a thought, and it's going to disappear. Um, and uh, we're just going to go back to normal again, using the same old woods that we use and doing the same old designs. Um, but strangely enough, things things developed from there. Uh, obviously COVID hit 
and uh, we all got uh, stuck in lockdown behind our PCs trying to figure out how Zoom works or a Teams meeting. And um, we got the chance to to sit down and it's just amazing how uh, what perspective time and the need to change direction uh, can actually do. Um, and it also, when, 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 th when life gets simplified, uh, you finally figure out what, what's important. So uh, we all sat at home. We had all these Teams meetings and all these Zoom meetings going in between. Um, and we had a couple of very hard questions to ask ourselves at Homewood. Um, for instance, what, what impact are we making on the environment? By importing wood, we don't actually know where it comes from and if it, it was sustainable or not. What is the impact of shipping and the logistics of, uh, of, of getting it here? Um, can we truly say that we are making an impact on the sustainability of our industry and our country? And are we actually putting back what we take out? Essentially, it comes down to what are we doing this for? Is it, is it for money, prestige, a job, or just making a difference? That's when it actually dawned on us. So the utilization of alien invasive wood biomass for furniture production in South Africa to help secure our future water resource, create jobs and leave a legacy without leaving a mark. So what the, the results were absolutely tremendous. I mean, the local market exploded. Uh, we've re received support from basically all sides of the country and, um, Obviously, we had some supply issues, but people thinking that for one of the invasive species, cottonwood, that it was pine, because uh, everyone, if they see a pale wood, they think it's pine. So we managed to balance this out as well. Our story has actually grown so immensely that uh, we are now one of the top suppliers in collaboration with Mr. Price Home. So you're welcome to go look at the YouTube video um, on the Cotini range. Now, there's also a good possibility of exporting furniture back to the countries where these invasive species are indigenous. Yeah, it is quite ironic and poetic at the same time, but the challenge we, we, we were facing were we need to expand the offering and, and bring to complement the poplar, Australian blackwood, river red gum, all these invasive biomasses that's clogging up the waterways um, and do something productive with it. In other words, giving something back. So we're doing all this, we've actually increased local and rural employment, and there's much more to come as well. You know, some of the, the, the designs using the, the, the invasive woodwork. We call it obviously eco furniture, and it leaves a legacy without leaving a mark. So we don't want to be those people that followed the norm and just did everything the same way that everyone else does. For the mere fact is, Lockdown learned us a few valuable lessons. And obviously you want to leave something behind for your children and for your children's children to, to look at and say, listen, you know, this is the way it should be. So to achieve this, um, our goal for sustain, uh, sustainable furniture production, we've partnered with the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries uh, to make this vision come true. To use sustainable, locally sourced alien woods uh, and support local communities by giving back to Mother Nature, by clearing the, the choking waterways and allowing the natural environment to thrive. That's when we came up with the Amanzi Conscious Collection. So we partnered up, obviously, with... Uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we joined forces with Working for Water Program. It's an initiative of the Western Cape government. Um, they were seeking to tackle the issue of the alien invasive trees and the destruction of local environment and water reserves. So just to give you a little bit of background on that, just over the past five years, Working for Water has cleared over 500 hectares of alien vegetation and freed 1.9 billion liters of water per year. Now, if you look at this image that I've got on the screen over here, that's uh, Mr. Ian Berry on the right-hand side there, and uh, those are river red gum logs. You can see how huge these things are. Now, you've got to know how, how much water this actually consumes. Um, and uh, the river red gum comes from the Breda River in the, in the Southern Cape, as well as the Blackwood. Um, not only that, they've created, it sparked the creation of jobs for over 230,000 people. So we at Homewood aim to sustain this excellent initiative by purchasing these alien invasive biomass and turning it into artisanal one-of-a-kind furniture pieces. 
And it is from this biomass that our Munzee conscious collection stems. By using alien invasive wood we, uh, to, craft, uh, to handcraft our eco furniture, we give back to the earth by freeing local waterways and give back to the people by creating both long-term and short-term employment. So some of these woods, uh, the main popular one was cotton, uh, cotton wood. Um, this actually comes from the free state. So you can see it, it's got beautiful grain to it. You really need to appreciate wood to, to understand what it creates. Um, uh, cotton wood is a very sort of paleish color wood, but uh, we've got a certain uh, way of changing the color without using chemicals. We, it's, it's the same sort of uh, home friendly, friendly chemicals you use in your house. So, um, co uh, like I say, uh, cotton wood is from uh, the Free State, uh, the Fixburg, uh, Fixburg area. There you can see the piles of logs that's already been taken out, um, which soon will be hopefully home wood furniture. Just some current stats on cottonwood itself. The maths up to now for 2021. The total uh, uh, cubic meters of planks consumed is 300 cubic meters. After sawmill recovery, it's 530 cubic meters of logs. The number of trees is at 1,044. It's gotten way over that now, I can tell you. And 4.2 hectares of, of uh, uh, for forest cleared. Liters of water saved is 25 million. Now, I think personally that is something to be proud of and to know that we've been part of this and we had our hand in there and Ian was knee deep in the water there and assisting these guys uh, assess the situation and finding a way of using these alien invasive biomasses. River red gum. Now, this is one of my personal favorites. It's, it's a very dense, it's got a sort of, not everyone likes the color because it's a more sort of a reddish color. Uh, it oxidizes over time and develops this, this more sort of ox blood color, but it's it's bulletproof. It's absolutely amazing. Now, your river red gum and your blackwood, uh, that comes from the Breda River Valley in the Southern Cape. As you can see the picture on the left-hand side of the bottom corner there, this is what they are doing. They're they consuming, they're water thirsty, they they raiders of water. And um, our job as, as as humans is is to try and make this sustainable and remove these from our waterways. In the same sense, we're creating jobs. I mean, you can see the size of these things. So you've got to know how much water these huge, humongous trees actually consume on a daily basis just to stay alive. So playing our part in it, as you can see there on the top right-hand corner as well, these logs, it's, it's a mobile uh, uh, sawmill, gets cut into planks, gets dried, and then from there on, um, after the drying process, it's, we use that to, to create our Manzi collection. Blackwood, everyone knows blackwood is obviously an invasive species. It's actually Australian blackwood. It's uh, part of the acacia family. Um, also one of my favorite woods. It's got beautiful grain, lots of character, uh, part of the knots, and obviously the lighter colors, the saps, the, the, the reds, the oranges, the, the browns. It's a very colorful sort of wood, but it blends in with any sort of area. So it can be used in almost any application in your home, in the bedroom, um, and um, uh, in your dining room area. So just one thing about the river red, uh, red gum as well. Um, that wood is, like I say, it's absolutely bulletproof. So it's ideal for lodges, game reserves, putting it in the open air because it can handle um, the outdoor elements very, very well. With this black wood, we, once again, if you look at the top corner over here uh, on the right-hand side, uh, one of the treatments that we, we, we do on this is metal wash. Um, that creates a sort of more sort of charcoal aged look um, on, on the woods and it, and it works, it reacts very, very well with the black wood itself. So as you can see on the, on the door there, it, it created dark lines with this, this almost sort of um, combination of two different colors. So it gives you the best of both worlds. Camphor, also one of the locally sourced woods uh, that obviously come, comes from the K, uh, KZN region. It's, um, it reminds me of camphor cream because, you know, when you like fall and you, you rub your arm with this, this camphor cream as a healing sort of uh, uh, um, uh, a cream. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a lovely fragrance to it and it works well outdoors as well. Also more of a bit of a lighter color. Um, so a lot of people don't tend to like the, the, the river red gum for, for the, the sort of rosier red color. 
uh, the, the the camphor is comes in at a, a very cost effective pricing and it's a beautiful wood it, it you can use it indoors outdoors um and once again the fragrance is just amazing <clears throat> just a little context there from ian is how can you produce high-end furniture that has soul and flair with something as cold and heartless as a machine now we don't employ machines we employ people uh there's no cnc machines involved in our factory we, we every item gets finished off by hand so we employ people from the from the local rural areas and uh we train them up we give them the skills we give them the artisans to eventually that they can can work for themselves and they they they, they, they learn something new so in we inevitably creating creating extra jobs i mean it's something that you can pass down to your kids knowledge is power it doesn't matter in what sense you get it but once you are hands on and you you've got this drive and this passion for what you do um it's something that you can you can pass on to generations and generations to come real furniture throughout the ages has always been a symbol and an expression of the person crafting it each piece will always capture the designer crafter and wood soul in it so is this the end um i personally don't think so and i know ian doesn't think so uh, as well so there's still lots of pages to be written about this what lies ahead for us will we ever exhaust the supply i don't think so there's there's so many avenues that have not been explored um and uh, we hope that we can actually pass this on to other companies that they they follow the same sort of trend i mean um we don't need to re rely on <clears throat> uh, imported woods and things like that. We've got everything here. We can create jobs. We can use these items and create beautiful furniture pieces. For instance, in our, uh, in our from our perspective, um, will we find any other species um, that will be viable? Uh, yes, I'm sure we will. We we're already exploring a couple of uh, options like syringa, um, uh, silky oak. So so they are definitely more more options that we can look at will the clearing and harvesting and sawmilling project remain viable to continue I, I surely hope so i surely hope so because um it's something that is is definitely needed in this country um not only from a job creation perspective but it's it's looking after mother nature what mother nature has given us and uh, the more we put our shoulder to the wheel and and the more hands on on this situation the better it'll be for everyone else. Can we make a significant a positive impact in the near, near future on the, our environment? Definitely. If we maintain this and we carry on with this um, and try and spread the word and get other people to do this, we can definitely make a difference to the environment. Our people, of course, yes, it's been proven by working uh, for water program as well. The jobs created thus far, 230,000 jobs. This is this is a number that you only read of in fairy tales. So just think of the magnitude of this whole situation if we we proceed with this and we, we carry on with this. And in our industry, if we, we can get sister companies that, that craft furniture, if we can get them to, to line up in the same sort of direction, where would this end up? It, it'll be, like I say, this is not a presentation. This is a story. Homewood is all about the story. We don't sell furniture. We, we tell our story, that's it. And our conscience, would you be happy to know that your involvement in this whole project made such a significant change? I'm not talking about two days from now. I'm not talking about two years from now. Think of when your kids are grown up, when they start working, what story would they tell? Where would they be? Um, what impact would this whole working towards sustainability by using these the biomasses and creating furniture i mean it's furniture is one small part of it but passion and pride is one thing but if you really put everything into it where would this lead us so that's that's our story and um, we're hoping to to actually carry the story through and, and and let the whole world hear about it just imagine the main fact if if you get another country and you can supply them with furniture made from from invasive species that actually come from their country i mean 
the, the end, uh, end result will be to get into lodges and go to lodges and say, listen, yeah, you've got invasive species on your property. Why don't we use it and produce something unique for you? Our designs, our, our creative craftsmanship has gone so far, but why don't we, we take that one step further? And eventually, hopefully, it'll, it'll get to that stage. Um, we're, hoping, we're hoping it will, and I'm sure it will. Any questions? Thanks, Vanna. That's so inspiring. And I uh, just love to hear your story, um, what you guys are doing. Congratulations to Homewood and the team and Ian. Thank and you. it really is phenomenal what you guys are doing for the community and sustainability and design. And um, there are no questions for now, but I don't know if you want to just talk a little bit about, I, was, I just love that um, piece you guys created that had multifunctional that turned into a table and you know you i think you guys won a, an award for that as well yes yeah that's the Copania unit so ian actually developed this it's taken him about five years to to develop the whole design and to make it actually work so essentially everyone in the, in the new sort of property industry um you haven't got space for a sideboard a dining table a, a socializing area a place to store so He's come up with this unique design where it essentially starts off as a kitchen center aisle. Um, and uh, you have people standing around in the kitchen and there's nowhere to sit. It actually folds open. You pull the six little boxes. That's done. The food's ready. You open it up. It actually opens up into a full eight-seater dining table. A sideboard. You can design it the way you want as well. So you can add either wine rack or cupboards to it. Um, but it's a it's a unique piece and we can make it for indoors and outdoor use obviously depending on the application so that will depend on the wood type that's used um, but a very unique piece very unique piece very popular as well oh great oh thanks again vanna there's no questions um as i said to everyone these are recorded and we'll send everyone the links um okay. have a great day vanna thanks again for joining us thanks for the opportunity go well all right, so join us at 11 for our next speaker, interior designer Jennifer Jones, who will be speaking on finding our way forward. We look forward to seeing you then.